Well, Fab, thanks for joining. I know you've got crazy schedule and yeah. uh, welcome thanks for to having our me. Partner Spotlight Series. Yeah. No, great, great. Happy to be here. Great, great. And just uh, real quick for our audience, uh, just to remind you how this works. We are live. We're streaming live on Zoom, on Zoom Live as well as LinkedIn Live. And uh, for those of you um, that are joining us, you have the capability to ask questions and comment. And so to get us kicked off on the comments, I would say right now, just post a, you know, one sentence, what's been your biggest challenge during this pandemic? That'll get the conversation rolling. Um, I will be asking fab questions, but then I will also be jumping into the comments and questions that you have and uh, relaying those to fab and getting his take on those as well. Um, this whole spotlight series that we're running is part of our uh, continuing education that we started back in May called Out of Office Hours. And we're just continuing to educate the ecosystem and our friends about supply chain related topics. Um, and this, you know, this uh, next series that we're doing now that runs all the way through September is specifically on uh, our partners and our partners technology. So uh, let's get it kicked off. Uh, Fab, the first thing that I always do is when I put people in the hot seat, I always okay. talk about something that we have in common. I know um, it's coming. Yeah. And you, <laughs> uh, you live in Canada, right? Yes. And, and Fab, you know, most of my friends and colleagues that I talk to in Canada, we usually talk about hockey, but you are a huge NBA fan and uh, you've got a big rivalry going right now. It's, uh, it, it, tonight's a big game for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, it's, uh, it's a great, uh, great way to intro this session, particularly as we talk about resiliency. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, my team, the, the, the current NBA champions, the Toronto Raptors, uh, certainly have shown a lot of resiliency uh, this year. They're, you know, they're down a game uh, and their, their backs are up against the wall. But um, this is a team, uh, if they've shown anything, they just, they just don't quit. So, uh, Look forward to tonight, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, we'll have a game seven in a couple of days. Yeah, that's awesome. And I know there's a big rivalry here uh, inside of Blue Yonder because yes. I know the, the TM Dev team, some of those guys are in Boston. So I can imagine the the smack talk and everything that's going on between you guys. So that's a fun thing. It does happen. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get this kicked off. Um, again, thanks for joining us. And um, I'll, I'll monitor the comments here in just a second. I'll be interested to see how many comments uh, people put in if they're Boston or Toronto fans, because I'm sure that's right. coming. <laughs> um, but so first off, uh, with the pandemic, you know, we saw many companies be exposed with supply chain issues. We're still in the middle of this thing. We're still right. seeing that. Um, but now companies are looking at it saying, okay, what technology should I use to build more resilient supply chains? So what I'm interested in, is which technology solutions uh, and products are Blue Yonder's customers, you know, buying, adopting, and implementing? Sure. And um, just to even augment your question, right, it's, it's an interesting paradigm we're in. Uh, obviously, there's a very un unfortunate situation globally, but one of the side effects is that it, it, the, the importance of the supply chain, of how supply chains operate, uh, has never been more paramount. It's never been more at the forefront. And I think a lot of organizations when looking at how they invest, you know, their budgets, their limited budgets, um, you know, are seeing the importance of having to beef up maybe some of their, their older processes um, and, and get them into a newer age. So it's really changed the emphasis on the space as a whole. Um, because of what's been exposed through through this whole uh, COVID phenomenon, um, as you know, at, at Blue Yonder, we have a you know we serve so many industries and we have such a broad spectrum of of capabilities um, entirely focused on supply chain. So it's hard to hard to narrow it down to you know one or two, but but certainly one of the key areas it has been around this whole notion again specific to the world of resiliency is really been focused around this area of, of supply chain visibility. And, and if I take it a step further, I, I personally, I don't love the word visibility, especially in regards of what, what we're bringing to, to the marketplace and to our customers, because visibility to me implies just being able to see things, which, which does have value. But what you really want to get to is not only the ability to see, but to understand 
to gain insights and then uh, fundamentally to drive resolution flows, right? Drive use cases, drive resolutions, and, and actually drive change. And um, that's where really one of, one of the hotter areas that uh, for us has, has been paramount with our, our customers. Yeah, and you guys, you know, you have those solutions. And of course, those solutions have to be powered by partners like us in right. regard to giving you that data. But, you know, you guys made a huge, huge bet on the Luminate platform. Yes. And I know that's been, you know, a big success for you. Uh, in regard to providing not only just visibility, but like you said, taking that data and creating the ability for users to have the capability to take action, right? And right. to make better decisions. And again, in order to do all that, you have to have good data. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the exciting things about that, and, and you're right, especially, you know, working with a, a company like Project 44, being able to bring all that, that data together and, and quite honestly present it on, on a platter is amazing. But if you think about, you know, guys like me that are maybe a, a little seasoned, I'll, I'll put that in finger quotes, maybe you've been around <laughs> a long time. Think about it, you know, 10, 15 years ago, if, if you were looking for, a, you know, a status update or an ETA on, on, on a carrier, you maybe got that once a day. And you were super lucky if, you, if it was accurate. Right. And but in today's environment, data is abundant. Um, you know, there are challenges in some areas around cleanliness and some, some of those things still, still exist, but particularly in the world of transport and supply chain, that's getting better and better. And, and uh, so that really sets up the opportunity now to do some really interesting things with that data. So bringing, you know, as I talked about engaging in this notion of, of visibility, but within a true supply chain context. So looking at how, you know, transit connects with inventory, connects with order fulfillment and demand, all of those, bringing all those things together under, under one, one umbrella, but also doing, looking at more advanced solving techniques, right? Looking at the opportunity to bring in things like machine learning and artificial intelligence to look for opportunities where, Quite honestly, we wouldn't be able to, to do those things with, with traditional methods of solving. It, it's a really an exciting time for the world of supply chain. Yeah, and you guys have made some great, great advancements, uh, hence the name Blue Yonder, right? I mean, that right. comes off of an acquisition that you guys did around the AI and ML space. So um, that's, uh, that's uh, you guys have, I think you, you, you know, you're leading in the forefront of that from supply chain, no doubt. Right, and, and, and uh, you know, Interesting, you call that out, right? It it it, it does really represent um, where we've where we've moved to as an organization. You know, traditionally where we've come from is like a lot of organizations. You know, standard package software solving very specific problems, and but in today's world, um, it's a new age, um, and you know, companies organizations are looking for outcomes, and we're talking about use cases. And so it's not necessarily about the, you know, the old RFP that gets issued and the future function lists. It's about how are you going to solve this specific problem, which may involve bringing all sorts of capabilities together. And, and so moving into this age of looking at things holistically is, um, is really what, you know, what's been our, our driving force as an organization. Yeah, and I think the two strategies of Blue Yonder and P44 you know, align in the fact that we both believe in platforms right. and in networks, right? And, and I know that, you know, your CEO made it clear that, you know, you guys are a platform, you want that input, you want that data, and you want to be able to connect with other parties in the ecosystem. And, you know, I think, again, that's huge. Yeah, I, I'm glad you mentioned that word platform, you know, in, in my career, um, you know, as I've done different speaking engagements, as I've talked to different customers, there's, there's certain topics that have always, you know, kind of risen to the top of my mind, you know, where I get on my, my soapbox, if you will. Yeah. And, and this notion of platform is one of them. And, and one of the key things that we're driving towards with that approach, you know, you hear platform a lot. It's become one of those words, right, that you hear everywhere. Everyone's got a platform. Everyone's developing a platform. What I've seen in the marketplace, though, is a lot of them are very insular. They're very internally focused. It's about tying you know, a company's own solutions together. And our viewpoint is, while that is an important thing, our viewpoint is, our view of a platform is it, does it has to be open. It has to be about that ecosystem. Think about the innovations that are happening in the marketplace, you being one of them, a very important one of them, 
right? It, you have to have an open platform to be able to bring in, bring those things together and, and um, I'll take advantage of a lot of, a lot of these innovations and, and create quite honestly something greater for, for our customer constituency. Great. Um, let me check the comments real fast, see what we've got sure. here. Um, here's one. How can, so it's a question, how can organizations quickly adapt to changing times via technology if the pandemic has highlighted their current inefficiencies? Wow. <laughs> yeah. a, this put you on the spot. <laughs> right, right. Um, one of the things I, I just mentioned uh, a little bit ago um, that I think gets overlooked but is, is becoming uh, very important in the space and certainly driving a lot of our approach is I talk about use cases and outcomes. And I think because when you ask that question, when you, when you look at an organization, you know, they have tons of challenges and they have tons of things that they have to solve. And a lot of times organizations still are set in the old ways. They think about functional silos and a lot of times they're organized that way. And what we're seeing is, is the more innovative companies, the more forward thinking companies are putting the, those, those approaches aside and thinking about outcomes and, use, and, and defining use cases. So that's allowing them to think across functions and focusing on, quite honestly, their end customer, right? Whoever that end customer is. And more and more, that end customer is becoming the individual consumer. So I, to answer that question as best I can in, in, you know, in, a, in, a, in a short little interaction, I think organizations really need to focus on those outcomes and use cases. What is the metric that you're trying to drive and let that define how you look for, you know, look for answers to the problem. Yeah, <clears throat> great, great call out. And, uh, you know, again, putting you in the hot, hot seat there from, uh, from sure, these live questions. Okay. But, you know, one of the things last week when we were talking with Dr. Mary Holcomb from the University of Tennessee, um, she was talking about, you know, this annual study they do every year and it always highlights technology, visibility challenges, Right. The visibility was one of the top ones that, you know, came up and I'm really interested in, you know, hearing your thoughts and it kind of goes into this question about this pandemic really pushed a lot of companies to look at visibility. I'm going to say faster in the process because yes. they said, Hey, where's my inventory, you know, right. or their customers are saying, where are the goods that were promised? Right. And we know, a lot of those were stuck overseas. They were stuck, you know, just different bottlenecks of the supply chain. But how are Blue Yonder's logistics customers using visibility to build more resilient supply chains or to be able to get, once they get past this, right, to, to strengthen this and, and make their supply chain stronger? Yeah, great question. And, and you know, the way we're looking at it um, is – as I mentioned earlier, when we talk about visibility, the ability to see something certainly important, right? We need the data, we need to have visibility into disruptions, alerts, you know, the ability to bring multiple uh, types of data together, right? To maybe, you know, more proactively look at things. That's, that's half the equation, right? The other half now becomes that, well, what do you do with that data? How do you turn it into something more predictive? How do you look at, at, and maybe that's even, you know, very advanced. How do you think about just looking at the holistic effect uh, down the supply chain? So let's take a transportation example, very simple, mm -hmm. right? Um, I get an alert or I get a message or some sort of signal that tells me a container is late at the port. That's a good thing to know, right? I understand it's late. Maybe I can delay, you know, the ground transport going to pick up the containers. I can make some decisions there. But what's even better is then, you know, if I can take that signal and then look at, you know, not only address that immediate problem, but understand, well, what's the downstream effect of that? That container that I'm supposed to get out that vessel, what orders do, does that affect? Right. What other transport is going to be waiting for, for those goods? What DCs are going to be waiting for those goods? What's the effect of, of inventory? So this is where this notion of supply chain context becomes really important because there, there aren't a lot of capabilities out there that tie all of those things together. And then take it a step further to drive resolution workflows as, as you identify those challenges, those forward thinking challenges. 
Yeah, and one of the things I'll go back and talk about just for a second when, you know, we talk about the Luminate platform, right? You guys have that capability to not only take in signals from Project 44, for instance, of, right. you know, things that are in execution, right, or in route from different modes, but the ability to look at, hey, what's in the warehouse? You know, yes. what's, what's at the store level? What's being, you know, at, at a, literally at the POS level? And you guys tie all that up and give that information easily, make it easily accessible to a user, which I think is the cool part because now you're yeah. looking at it holistically and you can make decisions. Well, it, it's, 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 it speaks to something we've kind of hinted at, but an important concept and, you know, being a supply chain, you know, supply chain nerd as well, you know, really excites me is, is we talk about use cases and outcomes. And what that ultimately implies, and, and you tie that together with this notion of a platform, but what it ultimately implies is the ability to start breaking down these silos of, say, if we keep it in the most simple terms, supply chain planning, supply chain execution, right? Those right. things, you know, rarely meet um, yeah. or met. And, and quite honestly, they have to. They have to work synergistically. And so this whole approach allows us to start to break those walls down and drive again use cases that are outcome driven that may have bits of each um, and combined workflows that that drive a result and it, that's a really really exciting time and that's where again the openness of the platform becomes so critical because you have to be able to absorb all of that data those external sources it's not an insular problem right you have to create these networks all of these things come together quite honestly just like it does on your phone we look at, we see these things happen in our personal lives all the time and we overlook them. You know, I know me and, you know, I'm, I'm very athletic in my personal life. And every time I download a new, you know, new thing on my phone, it's tied to five or six other things The the power of the network is, is just so immense. And, and I think there's a huge opportunity to drive that in the world of supply chain. Yeah, no, no doubt. And I mean, if you think about what you were talking about earlier, the evolution of this, right? Because it all started out with just, you know, the visibility component with the TMS. So, you know, just like we have that integration with you guys for, for TMS, for visibility. But then you're taking it to the next step, which is the platform. And you're powering maybe additional modes and you're allowing data right. to flow into the platform where you're giving, you know, Blue Yonder's customers the ability to make even more decisions. And it ties back into what you said the supply chain planning and the execution. So it's not just the TM piece anymore. Right. It's right. looking at it holistically for, for all the supply chain. And to me, I'm one of those supply chain nerds too, Fab. And yes. I think it's cool stuff. Um, yeah. And I know you have been around in this, I'm going to say the Blue Yonder ecosystem because yes. you guys have gone through some name changes over time. But sure. I think you date all the way back to I2. Is that correct? Uh, actually, I predate I2. I predate I2. I, with okay. a company called Intertrans Logistics that I joined oh, uh, yes. in the mid 90s that I2 acquired in, in 98. So, yeah, I've been, I've, I've been around through that, that whole transformation. Yeah. I and you've know seen how old I am, by the way. <laughs> well, hey, I'm, I'm, the same, I'm the same age. But <laughs> yeah. where I was going with that is the fact is that you've been involved and you've yes. seen so much um, technology advancements in right. this marketplace, right? And the offerings that we can give to customers. And that's where, what I really wanted to point out because you know, you, you've you been in this thing in the trenches for a long time. Yeah, and it's, it's you know, what it, a lot of times I get asked, you know, what drives your enthusiasm? What keeps you engaged? And for me, it's, it's especially now is seeing, quite honestly, the, the advancements in technology catch up with the thought leadership that a lot of us have had for years. Mm -hmm. So the concept of, of, you know, supply chain visibility and, and driving outcomes um, is not necessarily new, but there's technologies out there now that are help that have converged to help make this a reality. So companies such as yourself, right? Bringing that data as an input, right? We, we didn't really have that, you know, as little as a handful of years ago and in any, any real way, right? The, you know, API driven technologies, right? To drive openness, the, the, the power of machine learning, the computing power that's, uh, that's available, all of these things coming together is allowing us to take, you know, these, these, uh, these uh, 
kind of the, the thinking that we've had in supply chain and, and truly make them a reality. It's, it's incredibly exciting. Yeah, and I like to call that the power of the network too, because you know you you have you have these capabilities, but then you have to have this network behind you. You've got to be able to be connected to that network, and that, and when you have that global network connected, then you can present that data. But it's it's another thing to be able to speed up or spin up that network because you take a customer's carriers and then you bring them live and then start passing that data. It's, right. it's a cool thing. I mean, if you look at the evolution of just like you said, how we connect, you know, it went from manual to EDI to, yeah, we yes. might be able to go to a web portal and now it's API real time information. So it's, it's fascinating and it, it's really cool. Um, and again, I, I don't think I've said this, but it, it's, uh, we're honored to be a partner, you know, with Blue Yonder and we, uh, and we, you know, we, we like the continued innovation between our two companies. And um, we're seeing, um, you know, Blue Yonder customers adopt the P44 solution, either with TM or Luminate Control Tower. Right. And uh, it, it's, it, it's great. Right. And that's, again, you know, speaking to this notion of a platform, this is where, um, you know, a lot of times we think of these capabilities with like what uh, Project 44 brings to the table. And we have thought about it maybe in a, in a transport context, but the way we're looking at things is no, not necessarily, right? We, we can grab value across the broader supply chain. And again, it's a matter of, of, of hashing out or driving down particular use cases. So it's, it's broadening, broadening the way we can work together, which is, is, is again, incredibly exciting. Yeah, let me, uh, let's check the uh, comments here real fast. Don't wanna leave anybody out now. Uh, absolutely not, absolutely not. Okay. Um, all right, this one may go back to what we just talked about earlier, but okay. what, is the, what is the biggest thing your customers are focused on or asking for right now? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm sure that yeah. could be many things. Yeah, no, and it's, it's, a, it's a tough question um, only because we have so many, we, again, we serve so many industries. Um, so, you know, every industry has um, a different focus or a different thing driving them. Um, what I will say, you know, one thing is very top of mind, uh, for a lot of organizations and, and amplified because of, of this COVID uh, world that we live in, you know, we've talked about the consumer driven supply chain for years, not necessarily new, you know, we've, we've had different terms for it. Um, but more and more, it, you know, what's happened with COVID is, you know, this, the, the, the growing trend of e-commerce, um, you know, or, or again, consumer centricity, it's accelerated because some of us, and I use myself as an example, right? I, I you know, and I've spoken on this uh, in, in different forums, you know, I'm one of those maybe corner use cases, right? Where, you know, I live in a big city, I live in Toronto and, and I live five minutes from, you know, a whole bunch of major retailers. So I may not order as much from home because for me, it's just a quick, you know, hop in the car for a couple of minutes or in some cases even walk and I can get whatever I want. Right. Um, but now, you know, I'm not so keen on going into public uh, spaces. And, and um, so I'm doing more and more online. It's, it's forcing me to, to engage in a very different way. And you're getting exposed to a lot of the challenges that, you know, that different companies are faced with how they interact with, with customers. And um, so that is very much top of mind for a lot of organizations. And that's very synergistic, actually, with a, uh, an acquisition that we just made uh, a little while ago, a company called Yontrix, which provides a lot of that commerce-centric capability, but in a microservice um, uh, foundation that allows to add a lot of those value-added capabilities to an organization's interaction with the consumer without having to go and, you know, go and rip and replace or, or rebuild existing investment. So, you know, those types of things at the forefront are, are very top of mind for our customers and then how they tie back to, you know, the way we fulfill, right? Those, those tr traditional supply chain functions, how those things are joined together um, is, is, is also top of their mind from a longer term perspective. Yeah. And, and the one thing I would say to that is, you know, you, you hit the nail on the head when you said, you know, 
you about it's really about visibility too right there because you know you're if you're ordering online you want to know number one is it in stock right. number two if i press the button and order it, am i really going to get it yes. and then as soon as i do order it and pay for it you know where is this right where is that package right and you know a uh, perfect example right now for me is uh i've ordered a new router right and i'm going into this mesh system for my house and I'm ready for that to come because my kids are screaming at me, dad, there's not enough Wi-Fi in our house. And so <laughs> I'm sitting yeah. here going, all right, where is this? Come on, Amazon deliver. But uh, right. yeah, exactly. Um, well, we're coming to the end and what I wanted to do, I want to ask you this last question and it goes back to what you just talked about with microservices, but I'd love to have your thoughts on technology trends that you're seeing in the supply chain ecosystem just as a whole, because you're very well connected in you know, the ecosystem. So what are you seeing? Yeah, there's a there's a handful of things um, uh, that I'm seeing that it, that's really ra rising above you know other things. Um, some of which we've talked about, right? So one is the growing ecosystem and the importance of being open. Um, just seeing so much technology uh, and innovation come to market, and as an organized, especially as a larger organization, you know, like Blue Yonder, you know, you can't think of everything and develop everything. I, I think there's just, there's a, in a con, there's a scale effect that occurs when you can leverage, you know, the, the innovations that, that exist out there. I mean, just every day there's someone taking a new approach um, and bringing something new, new to market. So if you're very insular, I think you're, you're missing out on opportunity. So, you know, this is a big driving force on why when we talk about platform, we very much talk about it being very open. And, and encompassing, right? So that we can onboard those things very quickly. And, you know, we, you know even in, in something as narrow as, let's say, TMS, you know, we've done that very well in, in mm -hmm. um, you know, companies such as yourselves and making that a part of not thinking that the world of transport as an example is just about my TMS and, and the screens that I can present, but it's about engaging in a, in a broader ecosystem. So I think that's, that's a very, you know, an important trend. Um, Machine learning and AI is, is something that is very exciting. And everyone talks about it. Um, you know, there's, there's a handful of companies. I, I think we, we're absolutely one of them at the forefront that I think look at it very, uh, you know, very well and, and execute it on, on it well. And, um, you know, the one important thing I would caution with people is don't, think about machine learning as this thing, this, you know, I, I like to say pixie dust that just gets sprinkled on things and things are magically better. You have to think about use cases. What problems are you trying to solve? And, um, but the exciting part of it is we've talked about the abundance of data, right? right? The, the openness of these ecosystems allows us to bring things together where machine learning has a big play in looking at you know, that's the whole point is looking at mass amounts of data and, and looking and driving insights to make better decisions. So, you know, for us, that's, that's very much at the forefront and we're seeing, you know, rapid adoption of those across our entire, our, our, our entire so solution portfolio. Um, you hear a lot about microservices. So, um, you know, one of the challenges I think companies face in, in this COVID world is, you know, Companies don't have the appetite to do these big implementations anymore, right? Everyone's constrained. And so the ability to drive um, augmented value with a very specific case that maybe even, you know, augments existing, uh, existing technology, I think is, is something that, that will win the day. So making capabilities more digestible, again, focusing on use cases and outcomes rather than long RFPs and checklists um, is something that we're seeing a greater adoption around. And then, uh, and then related to that, just the last thing is, um, you know, this whole shift to the notion of use cases and outcomes, right? You're moving away from these big, you know, big RFPs that people produce and the checklists that we go through, more and more companies are looking at solving very pointed problems. Um, regardless, you know, you, you, Mr. You know, Blue Yonder, whoever it is, you worry about what you bring to bear to solve it, but I want to solve a, a particular use case. And I think more companies that 
that adopt that, I think will drive even better innovation and, and better success in the world of supply chain. Yeah, great. <clears throat> great points. And, and I, I agree, you know, w- with what you're saying there. Uh, absolutely. So, well, 30 minutes goes by really quick. It does. We've, we've blown through it. Um, yeah, this has been great. You know, again, this was more to just get your take on what's going on with Blue Yonder, the solutions, what's, what, what you're seeing in the, you know, in the ecosystem with your customers. Um, and just to educate, you know, uh, all of, uh, all of our followers. So I appreciate you coming on and, you know, giving us, uh, your opinions and thoughts. And it, again, it's great to partner with you guys. We continue to uh, look forward to creating, you know, great solutions and innovation in the industry and, um, good luck tonight in, uh, Ethics. for your Raptors and, uh, you know, um, Folks, join us next week, um, same same day next Wednesday. We'll have uh, we'll continue our spotlight series, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. Fab, thanks again, and appreciate thanks for having uh, me. you coming on. All Thank right. you very much. Thanks, everyone.